Oh, okay, we are. Yeah, now we are, webinar's so live. We are, we are live. So, so actually, if we don't let to this um, thirty-minute session in which we're going to be talking about the Wild Minds Project. Um, so, really, what the aim of this session is is for us to explain to you a bit about what Wild Minds actually is, um, to talk to you about what happens at, at the group, um, also to tell you a little bit about the evaluation as well of the Wild Minds Project. But I think most importantly, to tell you about how you can refer to Wild Minds if you have a young person that you're working with at, at the moment that you think might be appropriate or might be helped by this project we want to just make it really clear how you can get in touch with us and how you can kind of connect and um, so that's the plan and um, just before we get into the details let me introduce myself so my name is James Fairbairn I'm a clinical psychologist by background so I've worked mostly within the NHS in services for children and, and young people um, and I now work in a place called the Anna Freud National Centre for Children and Families um, and yeah, most of my experience is really working with with young people with with some more kind of sub difficult, severe mental health difficulties in, in an inpatient and day patient setting. Um, but I was really lucky to be asked by South Cams to be involved in this project, which has been really lovely. It's been fantastic. Um, so just just want to hand over to Leah, who's here as well, just to say hello. Yeah. So morning, everyone. I'm Leah. Um... I work as the Healthy You Coordinator for South Cam's District Council. Um, and we originally sort of set up the Wild Minds programme under the Let's Get Moving banner. I'm not sure if any of you um, ever heard of it. So we've just moved over to the Healthy You and it's working in partnership with James as the clinical psychologist for the programme and Milton Country Park, who delivers the programme for us. So I do the sort of the project management in the background if you like. Thanks Leia. So Leia's going to be um, working the chat function today so so we'd really invite you just to ask questions so if there's thoughts or questions or things that aren't clear do just pop it into the chat and we'll do our best to answer. So we're gonna we'll probably stop along the way and just just to kind of check in on questions and try to answer some and then we'll also keep a bit of time at the end as well so we'll make sure we keep 10 minutes or so uh, to kind of get into some chat discussion if there are things that feel important yeah and then also james if we miss we're going to email out the sort of the questions and answers if we don't answer your question now we'll send you the recording and the answers the questions yeah and and the copy of the slides so we're going to share some slides and we'll send those out to your email addresses as well okay all right let's get going so i'm just going to share my screen and then we'll we'll start telling you a bit about about wild minds Can you see that right there? Can people see yeah. that? Great. Okay, so um, so what, what is Wild Minds? What's it about? So this is, it's a group-based project for young people. So 14 to 17 year olds with, who, are, who are experiencing mental health difficulties. Um, and there's a particular emphasis in this group on having contact with nature. So this is about being outdoors. Um, it's about trying to build confidence, trying new things, but particularly being active and being in contact with, with nature. So, so things like um, learning new skills like bushcraft, yoga, survival skills, paddle boarding, um, things which many of the young people who've, who've been along haven't, haven't done before. So as Leah said, this has been developed by South Cam's Council and uh, with Cambridge Sport Lakes Trust. Um, so what, what happens is that there's, there's eight sessions that run for an hour and a half, and they're run by some really skilled instructors actually. So people have had a lot of experience in teaching some of these activities. And also youth workers who've, who've had lots of experience in working with young people and young people with mental health difficulties too, had experience in, in, in contact with, with young people with those kind of challenges. Um, and I've been involved in the development of the project, so thinking about how we kind of run it and develop the sessions alongside supervising some of the team um, and also some, some evaluations, just thinking a bit about how, how helpful it's been so far. So trying to learn about, um, for, learn from what the young people are telling us, but also learn for some, from some kind of outcome measures in terms of young people's well-being. Um, just to really quickly give you a little bit of the context of how did this develop? So, so why, why did Wild Minds develop? And there's, so there's this real emphasis on kind of being active and, and kind of building confidence. But this particular project happened really in the context of how things have been um, in relation to the mental health of young people within, within the UK. Um, so one of the things that's become strikingly clear over a number of years, at least 10 years, probably going back a bit further, 
is there's been a massive increase in the, the demand for mental health services from, from young people, from families. So rates of referrals have increased dramatically um, over the last 10 years, but even, you know, even recently as well. So if we look, for example, in terms of NHS uh, referral rate, rates for mental health difficulties, if you compare 2016, October that month, to October in 2019, there's almost a double of referral rates. Um, and that's a picture that's kind of been happening nationally. Um, so, so really there's, there's a number of reasons for that, and we could probably get into some discussion about why that is happening in our society. There's lots to think about, but actually we're not gonna be able to do that today. I think one of the, one of the things that, that is clear though, is that we need a change in how we think about mental health. So that actually in our society, what, what's becoming clear is that we're not going to be able to meet this demand um, just by having kind of professional specialist mental health services alone. And um, the demand is kind of too high. And actually, we need to be thinking in our communities about trying to provide a range of different forms of help and support that aren't just, you know, talking therapies, but that might really fit with the kind of needs of young people and provide a kind of a real choice, a range of different choices. But where there's a kind of an explicit focus, you know, that these are things which are around helping us to connect and helping us to support each other's mental health. So this idea fits a bit with this model called Thrive, which is a way of trying to bring together different forms of help for young people in terms of mental health and to have some kind of shared principles. So that's a little bit of the context for kind of how Wild Minds came about. And it's really another option. We would see this as, a, as an extra kind of option, an additional form of help for young people who might not want to kind of engage with talking therapies or who might not meet meet the thresholds for um for going into a specialist service um that's one of the kind of side effects again of this this massive increase in referrals is that the wait times and the um, the thresholds change to to get access to those services so wild minds has kind of been a bit of a response to that um and of course there's another context as well at the minute which is the pandemic that we're all very aware of and and what's very very apparent now is that there are some increases across across the population really in, in anxiety and depression whether that lasts kind of after the pandemic and kind of going forward with that's less clear but certainly um through the kind of earlier stages of, of the lockdown that's that's been found in the literature for um for young people in um yeah young people's anxiety and depression and what we've seen though is that there's been more of an impact on young people that already have some kind of vulnerability. So for young people with pre-existing mental health conditionings, um, there's been a worsening. That's that's generally our sense through through the pandemic. Um, so there's this kind of building evidence that actually there's probably a bit, been a bit of a disproportionate impact on those that maybe have, have kind of socioeconomic disadvantage or other disadvantages already. So we kind of need to be thinking about those groups. We need to be prioritizing those groups as well. Um, when, when we're thinking about what other interventions or support could we offer. So Wild Minds kind of connects a little bit with this context too. Um, and Wild Minds started actually, so, so although it was kind of developed, the idea was developed before the pandemic, it's actually been running through the pandemic. Okay. Um, and, and I suppose just thinking a little bit about what we try to offer at Wild Minds that actually it connects with what, what we know can kind of buffer against the impact of, of the pandemic. And um, so being able to kind of maintain physical um, exercise, having access to being outdoors, social, creative and cultural activities. So the literature, literature is kind of suggesting these are the types of things that seem to kind of offer some resilience against the impact of the pandemic. And actually the things that, that, that we would emphasize at, at the Wild Minds Group. So kind of perhaps suggesting that it's, it's even more important to have these kind of opportunities at the minute. Okay, so just to say a little bit then about what, so what do the sessions actually provide? What goes on within the sessions at Wild Mind? So as we're saying, so, so eight sessions um, in the Milton Country Park, which is a really lovely environment for people that don't know. It's, it's, it has lakes, it's, it's, um, it's really leafy, has lots of lovely walks. Um, so there's a focus on kind of learning a new skill. Each session has a structure. So it's focused around doing an activity, but there's space for young people also to kind of connect with each other, to get to know each other, and um, to join into some kind of collaborative activities as well, where there's a bit less emphasis on them being led by instructors. So things like making fires. Um, it's The idea is that this is a kind of safe environment. It's a supportive environment. There's not a focus on doing therapy or having to talk about difficulties, but if young people wanted to, it, our, our sense is that that we're trying to be kind of psychologically informed so that the staff are able to kind of listen to try to understand and make sense of what's going on for the, 
for young people who come to the group, but without any emphasis on young people having to kind of talk about their, their life or their stresses. Um, and I think the staff would kind of try to help young people to kind of engage in things they'd be encouraging um, that help to kind of problem solve and also to signpost as well. So if there are other things that do come up that seem a bit more a bit more serious or that might need some further support, then there's a, there's a kind of emphasis on connecting people to other help if they need to. Um, one thing that we've been doing within the group is, is asking young people to set goals about what they want from coming to, to Wild Minds. Um, and the reason for this is that um, we what we find is that if young people come along with an idea about this and they've got a bit of a direction they want to get to, some kind of focus, and actually that that's shared as well with the instructors, that it tends to lead to better outcomes. And that, that kind of fits with, with what we know about other mental health treatments as well. If you go into something with an idea about what you want out of it, then it kind of you tend to kind of do a bit better than just going with no sense of what this is about. Um, so there's, there's an emphasis as well in the sessions on trying to help young people to connect with each other that we would do some more kind of focused activities, particularly when young, when young people first start in the group to help them build relationships and get to know each other. And we found actually at the beginning when people come along and they're feeling a bit more anxious that actually having some more structure, some, some kind of games and activities to, to foster that is important. Um, and then also after, after Wild Minds is, is over, there's, there's, a, there's an opportunity to continue coming to the park in a satellite club for those, for those young people that want to do that. So rather than just kind of ending those connections that young people have made, um, we're trying to think about ways that they can continue for those that want that. Okay. Um, so just a little bit more detail on who, who's the kind of population that we're, we're hoping to, to help and support here. So young people 14 to 17, um, and we, we're not being specific. We're not, we're not um, kind of focused on any particular category or diagnosis of mental health difficulties. Really, we welcome a range of presenting kind of problems. So we expect that there'll be young people here that might have anxiety, um, difficulties, difficulties with mood and self-esteem that they might be common features as well. Um, but yeah, we're not, we're not kind of being specific. We want to kind of keep this, this quite broad. Um, we're not accepting referrals from, for young people that already have a kind of specialist mental health service uh, that's involved with them. So like a CAMS team. Um, and also young people who present with high risks to themselves or, or to others that, that we're not able to, to work with within the group. Um, but those are kind of really the only exclusion criteria. So we want to keep it, as I say, quite open. Um, I guess it's important to think about whether a young person can manage being in a group. So have they got the, the capacity to kind of communicate and not feel kind of too anxious that just being in a group is unmanageable. Um, so that, that would be something to consider too. Okay, so just to just spend a couple of minutes thinking about if, if there is a young person that you've got in mind or you're thinking about other, other young people you have contact with in your work, how do you, how do you get in contact with us? How do you refer? So the information is all online here at, at, um, at this web address. And we would, I guess we would really encourage um, young people to self-refer. So our hope is that young people can kind of come onto the website, have a read about what Wild Minds is, have a think about whether this might fit with them. Is this something that kind of connects with, with what they might like or what the kind of ways of getting help that might kind of fit for them. Um, and then um, we, we would like them to be able to fill out the form themselves. But if, but if as a referrer, and you're, you're kind of getting involved, we just encourage you to sit down with a young person and kind of think through the form um, and talk about it with them, kind of do it, do it together jointly. I know that Leah, Leah is available if people would like to get in contact with her over email as well, just to discuss referrals or to find out a bit more about, you know, maybe to think about, I've got this young person in mind, do you think they would be appropriate? So those kind of informal conversations, we'd really invite those as well. Um, but once people do refer or self-refer or, or you jointly refer, we then set up a call. So the young person and their parent and carer gets a call from us, um, from Leia probably. And we talk a bit more about the group, explain a bit more about what happens and what it's like, and really just decide together whether this is something that a young person wants. Um, and then if it is, then we do a bit of this goal setting that I mentioned. And also the young person would complete some measures of their well-being. So this is a way of us just being able to kind of check in on on their progress. Um, we also talk a bit about confidentiality and information sharing at that point as well. Um, okay, I'm just gonna pause there because I've just gone through quite a bit of information quite quickly. And I just wanna check in to see if there's any any questions or people have, have any thoughts. Um, 
or if there are any bits that aren't clear at the minute. Leah, have we got any questions? Yeah, yeah so we've got a question. Um, Thrive, there's a few programs with the same name. Is this Thrive program developed by Rob Kelly? Okay, no, so, so, Thrive, so Thrive is a national initiative, which is really a framework for kind of bringing together um, mental health services across different agencies. So it's really Thrive as a way of developing some kind of shared principles across lots of different types of mental health kind of care for young people. So it's really based on this this kind of idea that it's not just about kind of NHS services doing um, you know kind of therapy work with young people. That actually in our communities there there can be lots of different opportunities and ways for young people's mental health to be supported. And that if together we have a few kind of key shared principles, so some sh some shared language, some shared <laughs> ways of thinking about kind of what we do and how we begin and how we end with young people um, and that we base what we do what we offer we base on young people's needs so what they're needing and actually choosing um, that actually that that's a kind of more helpful way of organizing services rather than kind of all going off offering slightly different things and sometimes in ways that aren't so clear so that's really what Thrive is about and um, so Thrive isn't a particular kind of service in itself it's more of a framework for organizing um, a range of services across our kind of communities you can find if you if you google thrive um thrive anna freud center you'll be able to read more about it um so why is the age range 14 to 17 um yeah that's a good question i think i mean i think we would we would consider um running groups in the future with with different age ranges we are i think our, our thinking was that 14 to 17 year olds that in terms of their capacity to connect and build relationships with each other that you, you'd have some 14 year olds who might be more mature and who might be able to kind of get on quite easily with, you know, 16 year olds and kind of vice versa. You might have some 16, 17 year olds who could, you know, make friends with 14 year olds, 15 year olds. But kind of outside of that age group, it felt like it might be a bit more difficult for people to kind of connect and build relationships, which is essentially one of the things that we really want to promote at Wild Minds. Um, and then do we cover different skills each session? Yes, yeah. we do a variety yeah. of stuff. Um, <clears throat> also, depending on the weather, um, at the back, um, at the session, they get on the water or whether they'd be doing bushcraft type stuff in the wild place there at the park. Um, if that answers that one. And then does geography affect referrals? Yeah, you might want to say a bit more about that one there in terms of the areas that we're yeah, so um, because it's the South Cam's District Council supported program, it doesn't necessarily mean we're only taking referrals from the SEDC postcode. So <clears throat> it would be more of a question if the young person can get to Milton Country Park um, would be the sort of answer there. If yes, then we would li like to help them out um, at the session. So, Geography, not necessarily a problem, but if they can get there is the, the biggest hurdle, I'd say. Okay. Um, but this is a good one, James. If someone is on the CAM wait list for months, does this mean they cannot access wild mines? No, we would we would say that if if you've been if you're on a waiting list, then we would, yeah, we would um accept you into wild mines. Um, I think as long as as long as the the criteria that we just talked about were met and there weren't any concerns about kind of risk to safety um which which my guess is if you're if you're on a waiting list for a long time then it might be that those risks aren't so high um that absolutely we would we would accept you so we were, we were saying for a young person who's already engaged with a worker so perhaps doing a piece of therapy work who maybe has a team that's involved with them that 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 wouldn't um, we wouldn't be we kind of asking them to to join the group because because we're thinking a bit about resource and how we kind of reach young people that aren't accessing help. Um, <clears throat> is this just for city and South Cam's young people? Are we able to refer East Cam's? Yes, we do take East Cam's um, referrals as well. Um, the other question here, uh, dates of the group on the web page, can a young person start partway through the course? 
So yes, the next date is the 6th of June. Um, and James, do you want to answer the second part of that? Yeah, we, we would say that because um, the, the group development is really important, whilst it's not a kind of therapy group per se, that it still has a therapeutic aspect to it. Um, that, so a young person coming in, say halfway through, wouldn't wouldn't be so helpful. So we would we we would kind of join the group at the beginning, um, and the group would kind of follow through. So so I guess the answer to that is is no. We'd we kind of yeah we want to form the group and help the group to kind of develop over the eight weeks. I think that can be that, yeah that can, it can be difficult for a young person to, to, for them and also for the other young people who are beginning to kind of feel safe and get to know each other. Yeah. So, how many young people will be at the group? That's another one. But so, so recent, the first two cohorts have been around six or seven young people. Um, we've normally had kind of one or two dropouts, which I think is kind of kind of expected for a, a, a group project, a group intervention. Yeah, we'd like to start with ten, don't we, James? No more than. Yeah. Ten. Yeah. Um, and then there's. A well minds poster in Suffolk, is this accessible across the boundaries or at different referrals? We have some young people that live in Suff on the Suffolk border. Um, again, that's an interesting one. We would like to fill it with the Cambridgeshire um, county referrals, but if we do have a space at the end, we would like to help out anybody who can access the programme. So um, that would just be a case of, of being in touch um, with myself just before the programme for that one. Um, and then I think that is every question so far, James. OK. Unless anybody's got any, any more. OK. That's cool. So we just spend a couple of minutes just talking about some of the evaluation that we've done of the first two cohorts of Wild Mind. So we had around so about um, 11 or 12 young people involved in the first two groups. And we've been really interested in just trying to trying to learn more about whether this is helpful, young person, young people's experiences of being in the group. Um, and also we've been interested in kind of tracking their emotional well-being. So comparing the beginning and, and the end of the group. Um, in terms of their their well-being, and um, so just to say a little bit about that. So we, we had some aims really of this. We were thinking about it as a pilot for the first two cohorts, um, and this might sound this might sound like not a particularly um, great aim to have, but actually we're thinking about. We, we didn't want people to, to deteriorate when they joined the group. So we wanted to kind of make sure that young people's mental health wasn't getting worse. Um, we were thinking about that because actually we know that sometimes when young people are on waiting lists for a long time, some young people can, can get worse if they're not receiving help. And um, we're also thinking in the context of the pandemic as well, when there are a number of stresses on young people in terms of kind of social, social distancing and social isolation. So this was our kind of primary aim. And then our second James are thinking about actually in terms of emotional well-being, we you know we would hope to see some kind of progress towards people's own goals that they'd set, and 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 perhaps an improvement in their reports of emotional well-being after the group. And that was our kind of second aim, and also to as I was saying to just shape and improve the project using the the feedback that young people were giving giving us. Um, and really we, we went about that in some different ways, and um, we don't have we we didn't don't have a huge amount of data of course because there are only a few young people that were, were able to kind of complete these measures and, and they're a small group so far um, but using using the scale of emotional well-being called the the uh, WEM webs the Warwick Edinburgh mental mental well-being scale which is a 14 item questionnaire that asks about well-being over the last two weeks so kind of comparing young people's scores at the beginning and at the end of the group was quite encouraging actually. Um, it showed us that a couple of young people in particular reported quite significant changes. So you can see here young person two and nine, some quite significant changes in their scores and how they were thinking about reporting their emotional well-being. But some young people reported being the same, which was kind of still quite encouraging in the context of everything that's going on at the minute in terms of the pandemic as well. And other young people reported some kind of smaller, smaller shifts, some smaller kind of positive shifts. 
So we were quite encouraged by that. It certainly, it certainly was that people weren't weren't getting worse, and um, people's experiences of the group was really positive. Was, was kind of what we were hearing. So these are these are exa uh, examples of some of the goals that people were setting. Some of the things that people wanted to kind of improve whilst they were spending time over the eight sessions um, at the country park. So things like to feel less anxious, um, to be a bit more relaxed, to build confidence in meeting new people, um, to help me to understand others more, to build new relationships. So lots of them around kind of relationships and kind of mood and anxiety. Um, and overall, just to say, I suppose about, about the goals, overall, most of the young people, we found that most young people reported in some progress towards their goals, at least one of their goals. And I think there was a kind of there was an average improvement of a couple of points towards their their kind of goal. So we asked people to rate where they felt they were at in relation to achieving their goal at the beginning and at the end. Um, and we use that to compare. So we asked for qualitative feedback as well, and that was really encouraging. Lots of many of the young people said that they felt very supported in the sessions um, they had a sense of kind of learning something. And, and importantly, just that they'd, they'd been enjoying the session. So we asked them to rate that on a scale of one to five. The kind of dark green um, is very much um, light green, number four, kind of quite a bit. Um, and you can see that most people said that, you know, they felt able to take part in the sessions. And here's just, a, here's just some of the themes of the qualitative responses that people gave us in terms of the, the things that they enjoyed, the things that they took from the sessions. And the themes are really connected with, with kind of being feeling calm, so being able to, to kind of manage feelings. So a sense of, for example, being able to kind of breathe and relax, learning about learning about yoga, learning about calmness, um, a sense of learning some new skills, so things like how to make fires and go canoeing. Um, and also another theme of just that sense of being outdoors and in contact with nature. Um, so some nice some nice feedback here. I'll just leave that up for a second. Um, and I think I think what was more challenging for us was often to get constructive kind of feedback from the young people. We found that often young people were really positive in their the measures of experience that they were giving us. So we really had to work hard to kind of pull out, you know, what, what might we need to do differently? And I think we still need to think about that. We still need to develop some new ways of kind of building up more kind of yeah constructive, constructive ideas from young people about how we could change things a bit. Um, this was certainly one bit of feedback that's been quite helpful, that actually when people first come to the group, they feel pretty anxious, as, as you might imagine, coming to a new group with people that you don't know, if you've got some pre-existing kind of worries about and, and, and anxiety. Um, so that actually that we could do with having some more structure at the beginning, some more kind of focused activities to help get to know each other and, and break the ice, which is something that we've been, we've been doing and working on. Okay, so, so what are the next steps now? We'll, we we want to kind of publicize this this is a free intervention project um we want to open referral pathways so we're really inviting people to talk to us and, and get in contact around the young people that you might know or be working with um we want to continue evaluating this and just and just think a bit more about is this is this helping um and if if so what are the aspects of it that are kind of more helpful and less helpful as well so we're really interested in that and then, of course, as I mentioned, that this extra opportunity at Milton Country Park for young people that have finished the group to be able to come to come back and kind of continue with um, the kind of an activity based based group in the future through the Satellite Club. So we've got a, we've got a report that we've written on the the initial evaluation. So please, when we send the slides out, if you're interested, go and have a read there. And there's a lot more detail about the kind of feedback that we've had from young people and the initial the initial measures using the wellbeing questionnaires. Um, so, Leah, that's. I, I was just going to pause there again for a sec, just just coming towards the end. I know, but just wondering if there's any other questions or or things that have come up that would be helpful. Uh, no, that's no more questions there. Um, I guess if you go to the South Cam's District Council website, there's a section on wild minds that's got more information. And you'll find the self-referral form there for any young people who you think might benefit from joining. Um, and then I will get in touch personally with those referrals to sort of register them and have a quick chat with them um, about the programme. Um, and we'll complete the WEM webs and goal settings at that stage. 
Um, and then they will hear from the pack what they need to bring, where they need to go, and, and that kind of thing. So that's the, the process. And the next cohort starts on the 6th of June. And then the following one after that is over the summer holidays. And then we aim to get one more in at the end of the year before Christmas. So there's another three, at least in Milton Country Park this year, if you like. Um, and if you do forget anything, please do get in touch with myself after this or at any point, if you've got any questions. James, have you got any? That's great. I think, so that's all of the slides that we had. So as we said, we'll send out the slides to people. And yeah, do, do get in contact if you have any questions. I'll also share with you um, a poster and a A5 handout that you can share um, um, for the young people. Our posters put up where, wherever you like. Um, do feel free to share with, with anybody you think that might be able to refer young people. It would be great. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. And we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, James. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.